So I Okay. Yeah. Why would you say it? So um, let me tell you a little bit about the line height. Go ahead. Next slide. Do that. Um, okay. So line height started officially with a nonprofit organization in 1994, but it actually started sometime before that with the city. And so let me tell you a quick story. So uh, when I was in high school, uh, most of the individuals that I ran around with, let's just say they didn't want to fire. And uh, they either ended up addicted, incarcerated, or dead. All three. And uh, after high school, though, um, you know, I wanted to be a professional baseball player. And so I was recruited and I get a sports scholarship. And that took me out of that environment. And while I was in school trying to be a you know general professional baseball player, I get a call um, nine games into my senior season, and, uh, and my dad had passed away from a massive heart attack in his mid forties. And uh, due to him having some pre existing medical conditions, he didn't have any life insurance, and so I had uh, made a decision that I was going to draw from school and come home uh, and work and do whatever my mom would lose house and. And during that time um, of transition there, I had a So during that time of transition, um, I, I just made a decision and you know, these are the rate of circumstances that I made a decision in the beginning that I was going to pursue my purpose in life and align my will with his to do as much good to others as this allowed me to talk to them. And through that, that really had um, you know, led to, uh, how can I say this, that things over time were going to be a positive movement. And, um, and I kind of had some open doors that started to, to transpire. And one of the first jobs that I had was the uh, my hometown of Juvenile Court because I wanted to make a difference with at risk youth. And from that, I was also hired to the police department to run the Juvenile Diversion Program, which is to keep at risk youth out of incarceration, keep them out of so they can work with their parents, hold them accountable, and to get them involved in positive activities. Because there was a tremendous amount of youth that I was, that was kind of the common denominator that I had. Should have been involved, could have been involved in positive activities, but they didn't have the grades, they weren't hanging around with the right kids, and so they weren't, and so they were, you know, they were going to put their energy in the you know, things they should. And what happened was um, there was an intramural league down at the United Court. I get a call from Rob Lockman. He says, uh, well, Rob, you want to put a team in, uh, in this tough football league we have? Sure. So that wants to get out of that. That's a prohibition. Yeah, you know, into the sports fleet. And I love sport because it was really a platform to teach character. So, uh, you know, our opportunity to teach character while we give them positive to do. It. And, uh, and so that grew so much where we had so many individuals coming up for our teams that we were being limited by more than the teams could accommodate. So in 1993, 1994, we decided to start a league of our own and we started a league of champions sports programs. And that began to open that up regionally all over Northeast Ohio. And we began to do four and four football three and three basketball with the full purpose of reaching those athletes in the of rewarding them for the behaviors that we knew were going to be productive to their future and uh, allowing them to represent the new leaders. And that sort of the, the League of Champions sports program. And that evolved into uh, the Right the Road Center tutoring services. At that time, there was really not a lot of after school programs, so it was serving predominantly uh, individuals in the city of Hensound and the west side of Hensound and Rockford County. And uh, that's how Line Hagen started. So our mission is very clear. 
and that we help all people develop their potential, discover their destiny, and provide opportunities for them to make their lives better. And I'm not sure if it was because the individuals that I'm around with had a lot of wasted potential. I'm not sure if it was because my dad passed away at such a young age. He never reached his potential, you know, and that I developed a piece. I mean, I mean, I for wasted and, uh, and that was really the guiding influence like why we made our mission to develop a potential and help people to stay in their life. And that's kind of been the backbone ever since. Our method is very simple. We listen and understand the needs and wants of those we serve, and they create practical opportunities for them to walk through to achieve their goal. And so that really has been our secret sauce through the years. And if you want to know how flying high has grown, that's it right there. That we just we listened, understood the need, and then you know, tell my staff frequently, and I said, why don't we go all that school? I'm going to create the opportunities that they can actually do to get to where they're trying to be. That's been our core value. These are our current services. So if you think of flying high, think of us as we serve as, we serve as a community and workforce hub that integrates workforce training and readiness with behavioral health service. And so we do that through our professional development center, which has two wings. One is an accredited technical vocational school that has vocational programs. You see them up there. We well the SDS, CSDL, machining. We do some of our partners uh, for the CDL and machining. So that's on one wing. On the other wing, we have our job placement welcome centers. And those provide uh, financial assistance uh, to individuals to overcome barriers. We have recovery to work, re-entry to work programs, um, and we predominantly serve under serve underutilized individuals. Okay. More than the majority of our individuals are minorities. More come more than the majority come out of low-income areas and, and economic deprivation. And then we have an array of uh, employers that we also use. So all of our, you know, I've always said that Youngstown <clears throat> can be a tough place to do business. Right? I've been born and raised, but we're blessed because you know, we can set up programs for the individuals that are our toughest to serve, and that program can serve them. So I would be all excited when I got the guy in there that was homeless, three felonies, uh, you know, could pass a front screen, uh, you know, various other issues because if we can set stuff up around to get that back to where he is to where you're going to be, you know, then we would do this. And so that's always kind of been the you know the drive to do it. And that's how the professional development center think about it. The professional development center and trying to develop profession. That's that's how I mean. And then of course I had a lot of individuals coming through the door that wanted a job, needed a job. We had jobs to send them to, but they couldn't pass a price. And a lot of times it was just marijuana use or pill trends of low level use was an opiates, or, you know, that kind of crack. So, what would happen is I knew they couldn't get the job because the employer was drug screening, and then I'd send them out there to get help in the system, and they'd get lost in that system. So, I said, if we could start our own outpatient services where they could participate in those outpatients, get clean. While they're working with their workforce change managers, and we had a chance to pull on to them, get them through the process, get them clean, and then get them in front of the tools. So we started our own health home drug application, basically, for credit by the house of what we call the future. How am I going to help you? My head of the radios, I can just a moment tell you about them because we have some unique things that we do. We have our uh, nutritionally assisted treatment program, and we have we have doctors on staff, EO and MD, and also naturopathic doctor. So we incorporate natural ways to come you know, get your brain balanced, and come into recovery. So as long as uh, also traditional way, we also have a medically assisted treatment catering program. A lot of people are in Boston right now. A lot of people are you know, transitioning out of recovery using that. They want to transition off of that. We have a system of them. And then we also have two recovery houses uh, that we have. Here. And then the third branch is our asset healthy food, Mahoney Valley. 
that provide workforce acclimation for job candidates at our low urban farm, which is located on the north side, and also our satellite greenhouse. I cannot tell you how important that program is. Because again, we have a lot of individuals to come to us, need a job, want a job, and then I would send them to the job just to have them back in my office. No more than a month later, they lost the job. What happened? And of course, there was always their smile, my supervisor, they were sure they weren't showing up enough time. So then we realized before the job, there needed to be an acclimation or training where they could go a bunch of time off, take instructions. Right, complete tasks, work with others. And so that's why we really grow early farm that they're able to do it there. Well, under supervision, do a performance evaluation, but then all the way grow fresh produce so they can get back to the community. And so, and while they're doing that, we also have them, they start a purpose. And the money that they earn, they have training sites and bothering that program. A minimum of 75% of the training sites goes into a purpose time. Okay. And that money can only be used for specific reasons. You can't buy a cigarette with your purpose is not money. You can't, you can't you know, pay your cell phone bill unless it's corporate related. So that has been very strategic. We have had hundreds of individuals pay off substantial court fines and fees to get their driver's license with their purpose not. The most recent of which was a young man that had over ten thousand dollars in court fines and fees. He was able to pay that. He also bought a car with his purpose. He also just bought a trailer to clean the dial recovery with his purpose. So it adds up over time and it's been very strategic in helping overcome this. And it's not going to be a dividend for that. They're earning that. That's their money. That's you know, what drives them. And then, of course, our access to healthy foods also uh, <laughs> operates, you know, uh, in the Mahoney Valley Mobile Market. For most of you know, the partnership of action. The individuals, when you go to the market, if anybody shop on the market, yeah, you can shop on the market. If you haven't, please come to a place that we are, shop on the market. But the individuals you see working there are all in our work acclimation programs. So they are, they are going through that process. So that basically is the free win, right? Real quick here, the other thing I want to mention, I'm very excited about this. We really we work with Home for Good. We've worked with a lot of entry organizations in the past, but we're really centered we're in GTI, not Children's Correctional Institute. We have a direct pipeline that we've set up for individuals being released out of their high security back into the community. And we have a free employment and quick for them. We're very excited about that. Okay, we have four service locations. Of course, our main offices are downtown. We in the former Chase building. We occupy the entire sixth and seventh floor of the, of the former Chase building there. That is where our uh, job place and welcome center is in Mahoney County. We also have offices in downtown New Orleans, that is where our Trumbull County job place and work um, center is, welcome center is. And then, of course, we have our campus on the north side of the NSF at Bissell and Kenton Bryson. That's where the grow or the farm is, that's where the Delta Sioux is, that's where the recovery house is, and that's where it's soon to be our new training center. We'll be building on the corner of Kensington and this also on that campus. So, and then lastly, we have facilities at the Mahoney Valley campus here in Middle Ridge. Uh, that is where the port is for the Mahoney Valley Mobile Market with all the access to the students. Well, the Dodge Chief Stockhouse, so we're, we're very, you know, privileged to be walking the journey with people who are overcoming barriers. And so, um, being Stockhouse 2017 to present, so 633 to see financial support services overcome a form of barrier, 408 skills potential burn, see the amount of original workshop dependent, and most importantly, we're very blessed to be able to help 780 individuals be placed in the top of the last year. These are some of just our community partners that we currently work with. Um, and please forgive me if I miss. I think I have Youngstown works off. Forgive me, Jerry. But thought about it. Yeah. Right back. So these are just some of the organizations that we work with um, on a regular basis. 
So we are very open to collaborations and delivering, leveraging our services to the sense strategic. Uh, we've done that in the year very promptly in the expansion of our services. And then speaking of the last week, we see some recognition. Um, it's always good, you know, flying high, getting there. We're not an organization we really see in this kind of kind of blue collar organization or head down to try to do the work, meet the needs of people, sometimes blessing the time. And these are some of the things that we've been honored to, to receive the preaching back. Did I make 15 minutes, Melissa? Not at least time for questions and open conversation. That's why I can you tell I use a strict time. <laughs> I want to recognize Jeff for what he did on the labor market. I mean, that is, I mean, the uh, urban area is very, uh, it's very much of a team effort. Uh, there aren't any really real grocery stores, but they're the name of the stores, but uh, that uh, mobile market has made a huge, huge difference. So, kudos to you and the partners and the action for uh, doing every bit of step along with the project. Thank you, Gary. And I can use these questions. Yeah, we're uh, we're going to the training center. And that is really to expand some of our uh, customized plans that we will do for the portal. And so that the facility that allows us to do that. Thank you. It's been a privilege to work with y'all. I hope to work with you dealing with this whole process. Thank you. Thank you. We're receiving a lot of call up from the east side. I'll take advance. Um, and if there's any other questions you can think of before you head out, I'll Thank you.